you are not born for no reason. It's not like God just didn't have anything to do. He just created you. He created you with a plan and he created you with a purpose. Amen? Amen. Now, there's a misconception in the body of Christ and it's a big one. This misconception says that if God planned something, it will happen. Or if God said something, it will happen. That was true before he created man and handed over dominion. He said, let there be light, there was light. There was no resistance because the participation of man was not involved. But after God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion on the earth, God immediately handed over the reins of planet earth to man. So the next coming of God to do things after that would require the invite of man because man was now in charge on earth. Now, that rule of engagement, if you don't understand it, you will never pray. Destinies require prayer. You change things by prayer. You enforce changes by prayer. Enforce changes by prayer. You don't like your life? Pray. You are suffering? Pray. You are frustrated? Pray. Pray. Don't Google. Pray. Don't go on TikTok. Pray. Prayer is how you destroy the plans of the enemy. The enemy has plans which can only be destroyed in prayer. Is anyone suffering? Let him pray. If you are sick, pray. Before you take those tablets, pray. Because without prayer, those tablets will not work. Don't be weak in your prayers. Don't be inconsistent. Don't be powerless. Don't pray short prayers. We need to pray real prayers, aggressive prayers, specific prayers. Give us this day our daily bread. Us is who? Our daily bread is what? Lord, I have this issue as Kufis. I need you to step in on my behalf on this issue. I need you to open a door on this issue. Pray the word. Namata shoko. Pray specifically. Pray aggressively. Pray fervently. Pray consistently. Pray with power. Pray with passion. The effectual, effectual, fervent. What is fervent? Heartfelt prayer. Not something you read in a book. Heartfelt. Something that applies to your situation. You pray heartfelt. You, 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 you take the scripture. You internalize it until it is a part of you. Then you release the scripture. Heartfelt prayer. Heartfelt, specific, aggressive prayer of a righteous man. Listen, the Lord told me, I must not forget to tell you this. The Lord said, tell them, it's good for men to pray because they have problems. Men, and is anyone suffering, let him pray, James 5.13. But you need to move beyond that level to bring preventative prayers where you pray before the problem comes. Have you commanded the morning since the days began? In other words, at the beginning of my day, early in the morning, I command the whole day right there. I tell Monday, Monday, tomorrow you are Valentine's. I'm not fighting with my wife, number one. Number two, Monday, you will bring resources to me. Monday, you will bring payments to me. Monday, you will bring open doors to me. Monday, you, you, you will bring results. Monday, it should not just be another Monday. It will be a Monday full of results. Have you commanded your Monday morning? You don't wait for Monday morning to happen to you. You make Monday morning happen the way you want. You command your morning since your days began and cause the dawn to know its place. So you are telling Monday, now Monday from you, I want this allocation of breakthroughs. I want this level of resources. I want this level of customers. Uh, don't wait for customers to happen to you. You are the one who declares. You speak it, you declare it. The, the Bible says, thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established. So what you've been doing is reporting what has happened. No. Don't report what has happened. Make things happen in prayer. The purpose of prayer is to make things happen. The Bible says whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Don't wait for heaven to bind things. Heaven is waiting for you to bind things. Matthew 18 verse 18. And then he says whatever you lose. 
So I know you've been binding. But are you losing breakthroughs? Are you telling the breakthroughs that you want this week? Uh, are you telling this week that before Friday I want this to happen? I want the other thing to happen. Before Wednesday, I need this phone call to come from this country, from this person. Have you declared it or are you waiting? Have you declared or are you waiting? So Job says, have you commanded the morning? Give me the scripture again. Have you commanded the morning since the days began? And caused, caused, caused. Caused. So by, 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 by commanding, I cause. What is to cause? To make things happen. You have not commanded your promotion. You are waiting for your promotion. You are complaining that you are not promoted. But you have not caused it. Caused it. Commanded. Not suggested. Commanded. It means you pray with authority. You can't command like this. I really hope I get promoted, you know. I've been on this job for a long time. It's really not fair. That's not commanding. you command like a man and you declare have you caused the month of february to know his place february i'm commanding you results shall come no more delays have you caused it if you have not caused it where do you want it to come from the Lord said to me, he said, they are waiting for breakthroughs. He said, ask them where they want them to come from. Men of God, I'm waiting for a breakthrough. Okay. Who is going to cause the breakthrough, if not you? So it's like you come to the man of God to, to complain about what God is not doing. Man of God, you know, I don't understand. It's like basically you and your God. You and your boss, get your act together. That's what you're saying. I thought by now, I should be married. I mean, man of God, can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine, man of God, I'm touching 38. Can I text, can I WhatsApp, can I nothing, can I, can I even just, can I go to two mirror, can I can I can I video, can I can something, it's like, man of God, you and your God, don't you realize that I'm getting old? No, have you caused have you caused the men could wait to but have you caused it you can cause a commotion have you caused it have you commanded as long as your pastor commanded have you commanded whatever decrees i make from here if you don't take them into prayer to agree with them they will not happen because you are the establishing witness in everything that is done. You are the establishing witness. I can make a declaration here. If you don't take it into prayer, forget it. Personal responsibility. Have you caused the dawn to know its place? Listen to what that means. That means you can look at problems around you and tell them you must know your place. You have no place in my life. You have no authority in my life. Listen to me. Unogona kubvumiza ne kusabvumiza zvino kuitika kwauri. Listen to me. If Jesus has to knock on the door of my heart and I allow him to come in, who is a demon that he just comes in and I've not given him permission? Have you caused the demons to know their place that Kungu and I but not here? Have you caused the powers of darkness to know that you are a no-go area? Have you caused divorce to know that not in my house? Have you caused poverty to know you are not permitted anywhere near my vicinity? Have you caused uh, that injustice that happens to other people to know that you can rob other people but not me? I have divine exemption upon my life. Have you caused it to know? So the things that are happening to you, they don't know their place. They don't know their place. Right now when anything happens in my life, I'm making it a condition in my life that it must know its place. One of the things it must know is never again shall this be repeated. I am the one who causes it to know. 
Watch this. I don't assume that it knows. I am the one who makes it to know. I must tell sickness you are not permitted in my body. The last time I was sick was the last time. Sickness you are not permitted to come in. Why? Jesus took, he took past tense. He took infirmities away. He took them. So if he took them, what are you doing here? So you must know your place. I'm not permitted to have cancer. Cancer you are looking for a body. I refuse to volunteer my body. Arthritis, you are not permitted. You could have gone down my lineage, but not me, not me, not me. Cause it to know its place. Those are things that have not yet happened. Next verse. Next verse. Anzi, that you might take hold of the ends of the earth. You can take a hold of Botswana. You can take a hold of Tanzania. You can take a hold of Malawi. You can take a hold of Nigeria. You can take a hold of UK. You can take hold of it. You have power you don't know. Power to take a hold. This is prayer. This is prayer. Take a hold of it. I was talking about the future. So that's why I say to you, we're still dealing with witches. When are we going to get a hold of the nations? Look at the next part. Hansi, and the wicked to be shaken out of it. So you can shake wicked people out of your future. Witches, you are not permitted this week. The month of February is a witchcraft free month. I shake you out. So it means with this and I shake you out. It means your life is not guaranteed because I've shaken you out. Listen, your power to shake witches out, to shake them out of existence, to shake them out of function, your power to shake the oak out. Ay, 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 ay. We have been given these powers, church. I really believe that the prayers we are praying, we are praying at 0.5% of what God wants to hear. Even the size of prayer, you are you're asking a big God for small things. The things you are praying about do not even require faith. God is frustrated with our prayers. He told me to tell you, why are you not asking me for big things? He says the problem is you don't know who you are talking to. You are talking to El Shaddai when you are praying. What is a witch? A witch should just be squashed. End of discussion. Then we start dealing with other things. We start dealing with satanic powers, principalities. We start dealing with spiritual hosts of wickedness. We start dealing with the strong men. Right now, so we can move on to the real business issues. This is why we are not taking over. Because you are still deciding, should a witch live? Should a witch not live? Is it scriptural for a witch to die? Is it scriptural for the man of God to say, someone must die? The devil is a liar. The Bible says, suffer a witch not to live. So a witch must die. Then we move on to the bigger things. Yeah. Move on to bigger things. Hans Napoleon, I fought with the beast of Ephesus. You know what the Lord said to me? He said, Paul didn't deal with witches. He says, show me in your Bible where Paul dealt with witches for himself. Ah. He says, you foolish Galatians, you mean, who bewitched you? Not me. Who, who bewitched you? Paul was not dealing with witches. He said, I fought with the beast of Ephesus. Not Mroy. Beast. So, tunaku, tunaku graduate KBM. Tunaku graduate from Kutila Nem Roy. Kutu, to Tanzania Nem Beast. Thank you, Lord. The Lord said, there's no real reward for fighting with witches. I said, Lord, explain. He said, David, he said, the other day, I killed the lion. The other day, I killed the bear. No reward. But when he got to Goriath, even before the battle, he said, what shall be done for the man who kills this? 
<laughs> what shall be done for the men? There are things that will be done for you only when you graduate from dealing with witches, wizards. When you graduate from dealing with a roi, to an to diki diki, to a kuti truku 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 sweta ropa revanu, to an to diku to. Why are you troubled by such small things? Come up higher, church. Come up higher. When you tell the wicked, kuti so no 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 no. This is a no go area. In other words, you are just uh, declaring that in my jurisdiction, you are not permitted. <laughs> you are now dealing with principalities and powers. You are now dealing with the stars. You are now dealing with the moon. You are now dealing with the sun. When you now tell the sun, which is an entity, you shall not smite me by day. And the moon, you shall not smite me by night. Uh, when you are dealing with the stars, Pleiades, the book of Job, Mazarot, and you are telling these powers that no, I'm not a small boy. I'm telling you, you are not permitted to do one, two, three, four. Even if you are infusing poverty, hardship, and lack upon the land of Zimbabwe, I'm divinely exempted. I'm not a spiritual small boy. I am to be reckoned with. So I'm graduating. I'm graduating in power. You can't do that uh, sleeping from seven to seven. Yeah, 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 yeah. At night, uh, they must find you awake. I said they must find you awake. The uh, Bible says at midnight, uh, Paul and Silas, uh, they were praying and praising God. Uh, watch this. They were using the power of two. The power of two. That's why I tell you, log in, Usiku. Send me a message. What are you doing? You are saying, Apostle, come, 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 come. You are saying, Apostle, I'm holding your hand. Paul and Silas. We don't even really know who Silas was, but we know the demon says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. So when I say log in, I'm asking you to connect with the power of a man who's known in the spirit realm hallelujah so they'll say tafatwa and apostle Wasu and Apostle, Rumbi and Apostle, we're praying in the midnight hour. That's why I say, Connect, send me a message. So you are using the power of two. The power of two. The Bible says, uh, uh, Whatever two of you do on earth, heaven is going to agree. I'm paraphrasing. There's the power of agreement. So when I ask you to send a message, I'm asking you to agree with me. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. That at midnight, Paul and Silas, Apostle, and the congregant were praying. And when there's a power of two, what happens? A Bible says, I'm in Acts 16. The Bible says, the foundations of the prison began to shake. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not, you're not even dealing with jail guards, which is my jail guard. <laughs> Majer God, they were even afraid. Hallelujah. So when we hit those realms, we shake the foundations of satanic altars. We are now praying with an agreement. Oh, how I wish that this week would pack out this place in prayer. That online, online people would show up and not just be looking and watching, but be participating and know that midnight I'm online. That in the morning I'm online. Hallelujah. We are praying and two further notice. There's a prayer shift in this church. Why? We are tired of waiting for things. Now we are shifting things in the spirit. Prayer is out you go in the realm of the spirit and begin to shift things that are stagnant things that are not working like this screen would begin to work hallelujah i said things that are not working they must work hallelujah a devil is a liar by prayer we are forcing things to work we are not waiting for things to work. We are forcing things to work. One minute, just force some things to work. Just begin to tell things that no, not this season. I've shifted gears. I'm shifting things. One minute, pray. Somebody. One minute, pray. Hallelujah. What does prayer do? Prayer is how I summon heaven to be involved in earthly matters. They were in prison uh, on earth. What did they do? They prayed. They summoned heaven. 
So he said, heaven, we're in trouble. Here on earth, this is not the will of God. It was not God's will for them to be stuck in prison. So prayer is how you change things from the will of the enemy to the will of God. You change things from the will of the enemy to the will of God. The enemy wants you to die. How do you change it? Not by crying about it. Not by asking why. No, by prayer. So by prayer, I shall not die. That's the enemy's will. I shall live to declare the works of the Lord. What is prayer? Prayer is how I summon God. Prayer is how I have advantage over the enemy. If you are not praying, you are at a disadvantage. If you are not praying, you are always at a disadvantage. So by prayer, I am gaining advantage over the enemy. Why? By prayer, I tap into power from heaven. I don't discuss my problems. I tap into power from heaven. I need power, not one-on-one. -on -one. Power. I need results, not discussions. Results. Do you know even Moses was rebuked by his father-in-law, Jethro, about my one-on-one? -on -one? Your Bible. He was rebuked. Moses was meeting people from sunrise to sunset. His father-in-law said to him, Moses, this is not sustainable. This is actually unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I used to have one-on-ones and by the time you finish the day, you are heavy laden with problems. Now I don't look at your husband the same. Ah, you're a why is he like that? I thought he was a soft guy. I don't even look at him the same. But imagine, if you prayed about it, I didn't even need to know about it. It would just change. <laughs> Women, stop reporting your husband to relatives and report him to God and say, Jehovah, I know your power to change this man. I know your power to break the power of sin. Prayer breaks the power of sin. Prayer breaks weaknesses in people. Prayer is what caused a rebellious man like Paul to find Jesus. Prayer will cause a Damascus experience. No one could talk to Paul. Why are you talking to him? Chapter 1, verse 1, that tete ndo wano taurane, jukuta no zinzwa. Tete varu, tete varu kubadara school fees yengwana. Can I so Jehovah, I know that by the bruising of Christ, the iniquities were taken care of. So Jehovah, I take these iniquities and I nail them to the cross. According to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. In the name of Jesus, I invoke the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks of better things than the things of the family. And I declare and I decree that my story will be different. What my mother-in-law suffered, I will not suffer suffer my case must be different so i invoke a supernatural power of god to change this story in the name of jesus i rewrite this family history i refuse for my husband to do what his father did what his forefathers did the story must change here i know there are satanic handwritings of ordinances that are written contrary to us these are requirements so this behavior that my husband is doing i realize it from the scriptures that it was written in the volume of the books of his family but i thank you oh god that there's provision to rewrite things so i rewrite this thing i say this case it stops with my husband it will not fall unto my children in the name of jesus i pray oh god there's nothing too hard for you you are a story changer there's nothing impossible with you so jehovah the heart of kings my husband is in your hand you can turn him whichever way you please so jehovah grab a hold of his heart and turn it around from this sin turn it around from this evil you said in your word deliver us from evil so Jehovah God deliver him from evil deliver him from evil habits deliver him from self-destructive habits in the name of Jesus Jehovah can I remember Jesus Christ the other day and he said to the wind 
peace be still and because the same power that raised Jesus is on the inside of me Jehovah I'm praying with power this evil wind in my family peace be still in the name of Jesus Now, question. Does that not sound better than men of God I want a one-on-one? -on -one? What will you do at the one-on-one? -on -one? Can you imagine? Because my one-on-one, -on -one, can you imagine? Can you imagine? I know my three. And then I say, hmm, not three, is sure. I think I'll copy. Men of God, no. We go into the realm of the spirit. Listen, TK, right there, I want that to take a volume, young. Take a volume, Pichana. Take a volume. So, where TK is, is the realm of the spirit. So, no matter how much I'm shouting, volume, I just say, that's the one. Hello. So, if I want to change this volume, I don't change it here. I go into the realm of the spirit and I say, volume, guy query. Volume, guy query. Volume, guy queer. Volume, guy queer. Volume, guy queer. So look at this. I'm now putting less effort, but having more results because I've adjusted the thing from the correct realm. You have tried to adjust your marriage in the natural. This is how you are trying to change things. No! Go to the realm of the spirit. And some of them, you don't need to change them from him. You need to go to his father. You need to do what is called spiritual divine editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go and you begin to edit the behavior of his father, which was passed on to him. Hallelujah. In fact, you start with the grandfather. Now, to grandfather, I can't ask you to do it. I can't ask So, problem, I now tell you, Baba, I can't ask you to do it. Uh-uh. Here and two. No. You start with the grandfather. And you say, Jehovah God, I know it is in your power to rewrite this family history. So that which was passed from the grandfather passed to the father. And now I'm seeing it in my husband. And I believe my son has got three girlfriends. So already it is being passed over. Jehovah, I'm here as the wife. This is the reason I was married into this family. So I can be the repairer of the breach. Sometimes it's difficult for people who are in the problem to solve the problem. So me, the person who's married into this family, I'm seeing it as a problem. I'm seeing it as it is not normal. So Jehovah, because I'm now married into this family, in the name of Jesus, by divine right, I'm connected to this bloodline. So I have power and authority to change it. So by divine editing, I go to the behavior of the forefathers and I begin to adjust it like TK was adjusting the volume and I saying devil you are too loud we reduce your volume in the name of Jesus in fact we switch you off so you can switch off satanic activities from the realm of the spirit that's the purpose of prayer to switch things off from the realm of the spirit you switch off witchcraft from the realm of the spirit you switch off adultery from the realm of the spirit you switch off drinking from the realm of the spirit you switch of drugs from the realm of the spirit you switch it off or not zima by prayer that's why the bible says having wiped away you can wipe things away not by kutaura you wipe it away by prayer from the realm of the spirit whatever you don't like you can adjust it I said you can adjust it. Oh, Father God, grant us the grace to adjust things from the realm of the spirit. Today, we adjust poverty in the name of Jesus. A Bible says in Jeremiah 22, it says, write this man down as childless. Verse 30, I think, write this man down as childless. Aha. So this being childless is in the realm of the spirit. It is written. So I can wipe it away by the blood of Jesus. Jesus. 
This is what prayer does. You wipe things away. You rewrite things from the realm of the spirit. It was written of the men that it should be childless. That no one will prosper in his day and that his children will not prosper. So if I married into a family where there's poverty, I can rewrite it and say, Jehovah God, I rewrite Jeremiah 22 verse number 30. I know it is written, but Jehovah, I wipe it away by the blood of Jesus. And after I wipe it away, now I take the word of God. 3 John verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. What are you doing? You are rewriting destiny. What are you doing? You are changing things from the realm of the spirit. You are rewriting it. Where poverty was written, you are writing prosperity. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Psalm 112. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. Psalm 115 verse 14 to 15. May the Lord God increase you more and more. Both you and your children. I'm rewriting poverty. I'm writing prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 118 verse 25. Save now I pray O Lord. Send now prosperity in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 29 verse number 11. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. A future and a hope. That's what the Bible says. Genesis 30 verse 43. And the man became exceedingly prosperous. Exceedingly prosperous in the name of Jesus. Psalm 45 verse 7 and verse 11. Oh kabazato bashata God has anointed me more than my fellows. So I'm having more anointing. There will be more anointing. I'm rewriting family history. Oh, Kabahaya. I might come from a generation of powerlessness, but I'm rewriting. Come on, one minute. Just begin to rewrite. Begin to take the scriptures you know. What are you doing? You are rewriting history. You are rewriting history. You take the negative things. You wipe them away by the blood. And then you take the word of God. And then you rewrite the history. They shall have houses. They did not build Psalm 65. Kabazatolama. They shall not build and another inhabit. That's what happened to my uncles. So I rewrite that history. Isaiah 65 22. You shall not build and another inhabit. You shall not plant and another eat. My elect shall long enjoy the works of their hands. What are you doing, KPM? You are praying, rewriting history using the word of God in the name of Jesus. That's what you do in prayer. You are rewriting history in the name of Jesus. Oh, Kabaza Tobaya, Jehovah, I enforce this word. Where they've said I shall be poor, I refuse. Deuteronomy 1, verse 11, I'll make you a thousand times more than you are, both you and your children. Hey, Kabaza Tobaya, when things are slow, Jeremiah 1, verse number 12. You have seen well. You have seen well. I'm ready to perform my word. That's why I put the word there. Then God can perform it. Open your mouth and pray. Jehovah must perform the word. He must perform the word. I don't just go into prayer and complain. I enforce things. That's how I change my destiny. I put the destiny. I put the word of God over my destiny. After I put the scripture, I speak in tongues. I speak in heavy tongues. Lakatabasato. I shall be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. God will open up the good treasure, the heavens. He will open it for me. That's Deuteronomy 28. What are you doing? You are rewriting history. You are rewriting destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, you shall not borrow, you shall learn to 
to many nations. Open your mouth and pray. Ah, kabaza to la maya. Yeah, kete peke ti maya. Ah, kabato bezato. Alabakota maya. That's how you change things. You don't wait for things to change. You change things in the spirit by praying the word, not by just crying in prayer. By praying the word. Ah, kabaza to maya. Eh, kabaza to la maya. Yada na bakata kabaza to la maya. Atebeke zetele beke di andola maya. Ah, sabakota maya. As you are praying those scriptural prayers, the ancient of days has got no choice, but he has to step in on your behalf. In the name of Jesus, you are of a different breed. You are a winner. You are not a loser. Ah, kabaza to la maya. When you are in prayer, you take the scriptures you know and you begin to speak them and you begin to declare them over your life in the name of Jesus. Ah, kabaza to la maya. The devil is frustrated at the information you are getting because this is destiny shifting. This is life changing. This is how you shift things in the realm of the spirit. Ah, 